Hello everyone, we did Lake Mendota fishing spots a while ago. Now we're gonna do Lake Monona fishing spots. From shore, of course, you have a boat, you can go anywhere on the lake, you don't really need me to go over that. So we're gonna start with Monona Bay. Uh, Monona Bay is roughly 10 feet deep at the max, very, very shallow and weedy, generally. Um, and one of the best ice fishing spots for panfish around Madison. A lot of people fish it over the ice. But uh, I like open water here. I do fish open water here more than ice, but I do visit a lot during the winter. Now, the beach, I mean, the um, bay doesn't get more than 10 feet deep, except for this one spot over here by the shelter. It's like right around here that gets to about 15 feet deep, I think. And that is the deepest hole in Monona Bay. You can actually fish there because Monona Bay, as far as I'm aware of, Monona Bay actually like has a trail all around it. And on that trail is basically all public land. So you can see the trail right here. You can fish anywhere along this trail. Like this part, you may not be able to fish because that is some private property. But generally like there is kind of a trail basically going around the bay. And generally, like, um, you can fish most of these areas around the bay. Wouldn't fish any of these private docks, of course, but pretty much, like, from here all the way to, uh, you know, this railroad bridge, you can actually fish. Now, some of the hot spots are obviously, um, Brittenham Beach is okay. The, this, like, the new canoe launches, while when the canoe stuff isn't in operation, you can actually use... But a lot of people like to fish off the railroad bridge. Uh, either here, like the Monona Bay Bridge, a lot of people bluegill fish off of there. A lot of people fish for bass off of here uh, on this particular bridge. And of course, like the two hot spots for ice fishing are basically like the bay over here. And of course, the area around the bridge, uh, bridge area. There are um, it's a bit of everything. A lot of bluegills, bass, uh, pike, and musky as well. So there's like a water discharge over here. And sometimes during the winter months, like a lot of minnows tend to gather there. So that might actually be a good place around this area. And uh, of course, the place near the bridges with the structure, um, the fish tend to actually go there. So moving on from Monona Bay, you basically get to John Nolan Drive and we're gonna go this way around the lake. So here you have a couple of fishing piers here and uh, right next to obviously uh, Monona Terrace, you can fish anywhere along here. And depending on the year and the water level, bluegills, bass, crappie, all good around there. Uh, some people do actually throw like a big bluegill under a big bobber and sometimes a muskie smokes it. So that's kind of like what happens around Monona. There are, there are catfish in Monona, but there's not many and almost no one fishes for catfish in Monona. Do that in Mendota instead. All my videos on catfish are from Mendota. But basically anywhere along the walking trail is public land and you can fish off of it. Um, and then we come to Monona after these like fishing piers where you can probably fish under either under a bobber or just jig. Um, there's some pretty big bass, some pike that come around there, which is pretty good. The wall is one of the favorites, especially at night in the summer to fish for crappie. Now, um, this side of the wall over here near the, um, this side of the wall over here near the docks or the fish piers, it gets really deep right off. The other side, um, near to Machinery Row is very, very shallow right off. So the wall is where it really starts to get deep. I think it's probably 10, 15 feet right off the edge uh, once you get to past mid wall and more. And a lot of people go there during the summer to fish for um, crappie and bluegill. And also there's a lot of bass and walleye, crappie and walleye at, at night mainly. And of course, bluegill and maybe bass during the day, but mainly bluegill. Some people will all also like, you know, throw a bluegill under a bobber off the wall and a muskie will actually smoke it. So um, that's what they fish for there. In terms of parking on Monona Terrace, you either park in one of the Brittenham lots and then cross the road or you park in this like machinery row. Well, not the machinery row lot because you can't really, uh, that's not really public parking, but you park in the, um, the little lot next to machinery row. Uh, that's free on Sundays and after six, I believe, on, on weekdays. So um, you generally like uh, can park there. Of course, um, you can use kind of like the boat launch areas at night as piers to fish off of to get your baits in deeper water. There's also a lot of big carp here as well in addition to the other fish. So moving on from that, we get to um, like this Elk Creek, uh, Elk Lodge Park. Um, 
it's at the end of one of these roads. It's like Elks Lodge is like right next to it. Here it is. And it's called Kyle Park. It's very small, but I've caught some good bass off of here. And there's a lot of bluegill off of here too. Also caught some perch off of here as well. So it's called like, uh, it's on Blount. If you follow Blount Street all the way down, it's right by Elks Lodge. There's like a little bit of a public land. You can fish there. It's, uh, it's not a bad place to fish. Um, it is like probably two or three feet depending on the water level. And bluegills and uh, bass in the day, walleye. Haven't seen crappie there, but walleye at night. And carp as well. A lot of carp here. And then here we move on to B.B. Clark Beach. Um, you can do swimming and fishing. Now, the thing about B.B. Clark is during the day there are bluegills and bass. But the thing is, like the swimming area, specifically at night, I see a lot of big carp there, actually. The swimming area, the sandy swimming area, like in the actual swim area. I've never been able to actually hook one of them because they didn't ever bite my bait. But there are a lot of big, ba like decent sized carp in that swimming area, sandy at night. But otherwise, you have uh, bluegills and bass during the day outside the um, outside the swimming area around the rocky area where you have like the little big stone platforms. I don't suggest you try to fish in the swimming area during the day. There will be people swimming there and you shouldn't fish in there while they're swimming in there, obviously. And after the B.B. Clark Park, um, you get to like the random like parks on Rutledge Street. Like at the end of like every, uh, on, on a lot of these streets like Ingersoll, uh, for instance, there is like a park right here. And of course, on, at the end of like some of these streets, like I think few, there's also a park right there. There's like four, like three or four of these parks and they're very, very small. They're really like one person fishing spots, um, but they are pretty decent for bluegill and maybe some bass in there as well. If they actually have structure in some of them, you might be able to find some crappie at night, but mainly bluegills and bass. And of course, uh, going over on when Rutledge like merges into Morrison, basically, you have Morrison Park, which is a little bigger. There is a pier here where you can actually um, get uh, get deeper into the water. Now, even off the pier, the water is maybe like four feet deep, but that is enough for some bluegills and bass. And I did see a big dead walleye float up, so I know they're there as well. So um, depending on the night, um, if there's wind, it might be a little difficult, but you can basically use like the pier as kind of a pole holder almost and essentially like go for bluegills and bass off Morrison Park as well. And moving on from Morrison Park, you have Yahara Place Park. This is where the Yahara comes into Lake Monona. Um, you can also fish at these bridges as well. Uh, the Yahara River coming into Lake Monona has a uh, pike, bass, walleye. Never caught a catfish there. I've caught bullheads there, but no true catfish there. But the outpouring of Yahara Place Park um, in the spring, there's a lot of good musky action here in the spring like pretty much like on opening weekend after like a couple more weeks it's not so good anymore the water gets warmer and the musky move deeper but like uh basically like in the very spring in the early times you got you do have quite a, you do have quite a few musky hanging around here but um the problem is a lot of times they hang around there until about opening day weekend then after that like the water gets too warm and they move out so essentially like uh all this place right here you can fish um, off the edge and I have caught bluegill and bass all uh, over the edge right here I've also seen some really big carp, but I've never been able to catch them around this area So this is another really big area Yahara Place Park moving on from Yahara Place Park We have Albrich, Albrich and Starkwater Creek. Now. This is actually probably one of the um, I'd say one of the most popular places. I mean, there's other parks like Hudson and uh, Hudson Park and stuff here, but, and generally like this shoreline is more, mostly public, but there's not too many places to stand and fish around here. So next we're gonna move on to Starkwater Creek. Um, there's this big, big outcropping rock thingy. And because there's this big, big outcropping rock thingy, sorry, the video died, but uh, because there's this big, big crop, uh, outcropping rock thingy, you can actually stand on this thing. And uh, if you, like jig minnows or something. Uh, you can get a pretty good smallmouth bass and largemouth bass off here. There's obviously pike off here too. And there's a lot of walleye come at nightfall. So pike, walleye, bass, very good here. Obviously a lot of bluegills as well and bullheads. If you go over this way towards this smaller pier over here, there are a lot of bowfin over here, especially when the water is low. Um, I've seen a lot of carp come up around here too, but from what I've heard, I've never hooked one of the carp, but from what I've heard, you're much more successful trying to hook the carp from shore then off the pier and there's some pretty big ones over there so that's albrick 
uh, boat launch. Um, then you go to um, Stone Bridge Park, which is basically um, there's a couple of parks here. Like there's whole uh, this Holy Bay. There's like Sam Domino Park as well. You can fish off of there. Shore space is limited. There's a lot of trees around this area. Um, but there are like these parks, like uh, Sam Domino is one of them. Uh, and I think this one's also called Stonebridge Park. Uh, it was Stonebridge Park on the other map. I personally haven't fished this one, but I would guess there's some bowfin in this bay here. Some, uh, some good bass and bluegill as well. Yeah, Stonebridge Park is right next to um, uh, Sam Domino Park. Stonebridge I have actually been to, I think. And there is a pier that you can use. Just don't hit the boats or anything. This is public, uh, just like kind of, you can use the pier to get into like slightly deeper water and it probably helps you with a little bit of bass fishing as well. Next, you just basically go to Schulter Beach and Schulter Beach is interesting because it has this little kind of thing right here that comes in and there's a lot, it's mainly bluegills here, but if you want like bass and pike, there is this like little pier thing you can go on and you can fish off of that pier as well. Water's not very deep, probably three, three feet deep or so off the pier but uh, you can actually use this pier. I really wouldn't fish off the beach. The water is way too shallow and there's too many people there, but generally like fishing this long thing for bluegill and off the pier for bigger fish. So the next one is going to be this Tony Watha Park and Boat Launch. There's this pier that if boats aren't launching here, you can actually use. You can also fish off the shore, but I would honestly just use the pier to fish. Um, I wouldn't spend too much time at these specific places. There is decent bass there, but there's better places to fish uh, based on that. You also have Whitehaven Park. This is basically just a boat launch, I think, at the end of a street. Um, there's not much here. I mean, there's better place to fish. You can fish there off the dock. I just would go to other places to fish. So after that, you have um, Winnicott Trail Boat Launch. So Winnicott Trail Boat Launch, you can fish off the launch here, and you get decently deep water. So there's like, you know, there's bass, pike, bluegill here. But the thing is, if you follow the street back, you have like this little lagoon here. And when it's clear, like I would say like early summer or like, you know, a lot of people fish in this particular lagoon for panfish. There's some decent bass here, uh, but you're probably going to need like top water for frog or something here at this time of the year. But earlier in the year, I think like this is a little bit more clear. And, uh, you know, there's this big park that you can fish in this pool pond right here. And yes, there is like pretty good like uh, panfish and bass action here on uh, Winnequa Park. So it's not the actual lake, just follow the street back. And there's parking here and there's like, you know, uh, a big like kind of lagoon here. So there's a lot of fishing going on there. Not so much at the boat launch itself. There's Tecumseh Park, which is basically on this little island thing. It's very, very small, a slit of public land among private property. You can fish off there. But I would also find other uh, place to fish. Oh, and uh, angry people might actually mistake you that thinking that you're on their property. But uh, this slit of land here, there is a little slit of public land here. Um, in terms of like after uh, Tecumseh Park, you have Birch Haven Park, which is also really, really small. Um, I think it's like, let me see. I think Birch Haven Park is kind of around this area. I'm not exactly sure. I've, I've come this place before, but it is kind of like tucked in the private residences. Um, I think like Frostwoods Beach, um, you can also fish off of there, but I think Birch Haven's like around here somewhere. It's not um, a great place to fish, I would say, Birch Haven, because it's so small and you are likely to just trespass if you try to actually fish there. Um, yeah, Birch Haven is like right off this island. There's like, you see this like little slit right here. Um, that's kind of private property, but I don't, pro public property, but I've never actually tried this before because I don't know how you, uh, I think you have to just park on the street here and access this slot right here. And uh, I think the space is just too squished for me to really fish. So I probably wouldn't. Uh, same thing with Tecumseh and Birch Haven. I probably just wouldn't fish there. I, I know there are a couple people that have fished there and there is some good bass there but um, not really my cup of tea because it's too small. The next one is Grand Park. It's the same thing. I've actually fished this area. Uh, I've caught bullheads, bluegill, and bass here, and people have caught pike and um, even musky here too, but um, it's also one of those really small slit parks. 
And the other thing about this is there's so many boats that there's so much boat traffic that comes around here that I personally don't think it's worth fishing, especially during the weekend. So that's Graham Park. And that's just kind of like this channel that um, this is actually the Yahara River leaving um, Min uh, Minona. So it's not bad, like, but the real action is actually in the actual river there, which you can't get to without a boat. So Graham Park. And then you have Aoponic Park. Now, I've fished Aoponic Park, caught several bass and bluegills. There's like this, some like down tree over here. There's a couple of bluegills, but the main action on Ponic Park is actually near this end of Ponic Park, where it gets a little bit like grimy. The water's like really reedy. And that's gonna be like where most of the bass are. So that's Ao Pownic Park. I caught like two or three bass there. Pretty good for a one-day session. After that, you have Esther Beach Park. Um, Esther Beach is actually fairly comfortable to fish off of. Uh, here it is, Esther Beach Park. It's fairly comfortable to fish off of. I just wouldn't because you can't really get into the deep water. The piers are not public. They're all private. And uh, yeah, like there's also people swimming in the actual beach. You'd have to fish off the side. And I think it's a little shallow. You can probably catch some bluegill off here, but there's honestly just better place to fish unless you live right near there. And then completing the circle, we have the Olin Turnville um, Park and Boat Launch. And the boat launch, there's actually like a six foot hole like in front of the boat launch because it's obviously boats. Uh, it's not too busy. You can fish here. I know people have caught pike and bass around this area uh, where, uh, where Wingrid Creek comes out and there's people that fish along Wingrid Creek. Creek discharges like this one are always popular for fish to actually hang around. So that's all in Turnville Park right here. I've seen people catch musky there as well. A lot of people just fish Wingrid Creek as well. And of course, there's this pier at Olin Park. Um... And uh, yeah, I've fished this before. It's, I think there's a lot of carp here, um, but there's also a ton of bluegill here. Probably crappie here at night. I've never tried fishing it at night. Um, I don't think you can actually park in Olin at night. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but yeah, there's some bass there too. So that's the last place we're going to discuss, the Olin Pier over here. But uh, a lot more people, I think, fish at the uh, boat launch uh, at the mouth of Winger Creek. So there we go. We discussed like maybe 15, 20 places around Minota where you can actually fish. I fish probably 10 or 11 of them. And uh, yeah, I do actually think that Minota is mainly known for its bass. Um, it has good crappie, gills, and musky. Um, Monona is the big musky lake. Mendota is the big pike lake. Monona has very few catfish. It does have a couple every now, uh, here and there, but Mendota is the main catfish lake. So if you're a cat fan... Uh, like me, you probably fish Mendota more, but if you're like a panfish fan or like a big bass fan, Monona might actually be your ticket. But yeah, we discussed all the places around Monona. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please don't feel free to ask, and I will see you guys next time.